online platforms, as you probably all know, have deeply infiltrated in the daily lives of many of us. They've actually come to define more or less our societies and more basically our democracies. So you might say that Western society are governed through institutions and they're the pillars of our social and legal order. But when most of our economic and social activities move from offline to online, to online context, what does this actually mean for our institutions, for our sectors and our professional codes? So my basic question for my 10 minute introduction is, are platforms actually replacing or bypassing institutions? Or are they perhaps gradually merging with institutions? But in order to answer that question, we need to first look at a platform ecosystem, how it is structured and how it is governed. Now, I can't explain that in 10 minutes, but I will, uh, I will give one example of a sector in which I think this uh, is manifest. Now, first of all, the online world, as you probably all know, is it runs basically on an American-based platform ecosystem. And that ecosystem is operated by what we call the big five, the big five corporate players. Of course, Google Alphabet, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft. And they operate a, a strategic online infrastructure of information services that function more or less like a utility, like utilities. For instance, social networks, web hosting, uh, pay systems, ID services, cloud services, advertising services, uh, search engines, maps, app stores, navigation systems, video hosting, mail systems, and there's pretty much like, you know, something between 70 and 100 of those basic infrastructural information services. Now, they're not just services, but they tend to act as gatekeepers or, you know, to all of our social and economic activities. And societies across the globe, but most certainly in Europe, they have come to depend on these online platforms, uh, the platform infrastructure for organize our, to organize our society online. Now, all of our sectors, both private and public, are gradually moving towards this online infrastructure. And let me give you one specific, zoom in on one specific example, which is news. The news, of course, news uh, organizations, they're a private sector, but a private sector with a large public responsibility. And the big five influence this sector in several ways, but most of all, of course, news content producers, they have become pretty much dependent on their information services, like Facebook and Google for ads, for distribution, for data analytics, for web servers, ID systems, and a lot more. Beyond that, the big five has all, have also developed, and they do this for most sectors, sector-specific aggregators. Like Facebook has instant articles, for instance, and newsfeed. Google has Google News, Apple has Apple News. Pretty much, I don't know if you're familiar with this figure, but pretty much 50% of all Americans get their news through Facebook. And that's tremendous. Now, I'm not even counting, you know, uh, uh, the other aggregators like Apple News and uh, Google News. And these aggregators, they do not just produce news content, they're connectors. They're basically unbundling and then rebundling news and ads produced by content providers. And we call those complementers. Here are some of the complementers. Complementers come in two kinds. Complementers can be digitally born platforms, like you see here, the Huffington Post, Upward, Upworthy, BuzzFeed, Breitbart News, there's a large number of others. But they can also be, in you know, many ways, they're also legacy news corporations that are often running their own digital platforms, like the New York Times and the Washington Post, and of course, their content is now mostly distributed through those aggregators uh, of the big five. Now, increasingly, the big five are also starting to buy up or to, um, uh, to start their own sectoral complementers. Think, for instance, here in this figure, the Washington Post, Post is now owned by Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon. And there have been plenty of examples over the past few months uh, Amazon buying up Whole Foods, for instance, I could go on and on. You constantly see these, um, you know, these sectoral uh, complementers that they're either buying up or that they're starting themselves. Now, let's stick for a minute to news media. And 
the complementers in news media, they can be considered, um, well, pretty much a societal institution. We also call that the fourth estate. They're responsible for certain values, as you know, for instance, comprehensive news reporting, but also accurate news reporting. Now, last November, in 20, in about a year ago, after the US election, Facebook, most prominently, came under fire for the creation of filter bubbles and the spreading of fake news. And at that moment, Mark Zuckerberg really came to the, to the defense, of course, of Facebook, saying, hey, Facebook is not a media company. We do not produce news, so we're not responsible for those particular value. So we create value by unbundling and rebundling news content, and we're connecting readers to advertisers, to, you know, to content. So, in other words, Mark Zuckerberg said, we're not responsible for these you know, social and institutional values. We simply do not create a new, so we're sort of odd ducks in this system. So here's the paradox, the paradox that I would like to point out. If platforms, and then of course also the, plat the, the algorithms and the business models that are part of these uh, platforms, are they replacing or bypassing institutions? And if that's the case, who is taking care of public values? That's a question that really, you know, is very profound to the development of this infrastructural uh, online system. Now, what are public values? That's a huge question, of course. I, you know, can't go into that uh, in 10 minutes, but I'm pretty sure that citizens want platforms to take their fair share of responsibilities for values like security, for transparency, for accuracy, and for privacy. But societies also want platforms to be fair, to be inclusive, to be responsible, to be accountable, to be democratic. So there's a lot of these values that come up in terms of you know, who takes care of public values if it's not taking place within our institutional frameworks. Now, historically, these kind of public values were always anchored in institutions, in sectors, in laws, in you know, professional codes. But public values, one thing, of course, that we all know is that it's not a set of values that is you know, preset that we've already discussed and now they're set, sort of put in stone, you know, set in stone in laws. They're actually fiercely embattled, and that is something that we're currently seeing right now in all of these sectors, public values and their implementation in online infrastructure is something that is fiercely embedded. The platformization, as we call it, the platformization of society means that values are actually negotiated in all sectors, public and private, and here you see some of these sectors with the big five squarely in the middle. Sectors like health, like education, and also, you know, sectors like finance, retail, the hospitality sector, but also a simple thing on a very basic level, neighborhood apps. They're now currently being infiltrated by, you know, uh, platforms, online platforms. And that negotiation about public values takes place at all levels, it takes place at single institutions, for instance, in schools or in hospitals, deciding which infrastructural information service they're going to use. At the local level, think about city governments trying to decide how to deal with Airbnb, for instance. At the state level, uh, Germany, for instance, over the past few months has decided how to encapsulate platforms in deciding what is fake news. Or at the supranational level, think about the big fine that Google was just given to um, uh, uh, for in antitrust uh, allegations. So what we're seeing currently is you know, a lot of clashes between state, market, and civil society actors about power, about responsibilities. And that currently, you know, that platform system is governed by the five, the big five uh, market players that I just pointed out, whose algorithms and business models are profoundly intransparent. While at the same time, they're pretty much transforming the structure of our institutions. So my question for this panel is, how do we deal with these, you know, uh, uh, well, with this, the strategies of platformization? How can we govern platforms and how can we help plat 
the online society to move towards a fair and democratic society. So those are just some of the questions I would like to pose to the panel and I hope um, you will be uh, thinking about that with us. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jose. Thanks for your, your great introduction. Um, I think two or three points that, that are really of importance for, for the rest of this panel. I think first, you know, we started by saying that we have all these platforms that are uh, starting to organize parts of our society. Uh, but what you've been showing is that we shouldn't just talk about the single platforms like uh, Uber or Coursera or Fitbit, or, but all those platforms are actually connected uh, on a higher level. We use Facebook to log in to all these other platforms. Uh, Google is collecting data about us across those platforms. So those big five, they really provide the infrastructure of the underlying platforms. And another point that I took away from your presentation that I find really interesting is that many of those platforms, they operate in a particular domain. Uh, you gave the example of news. But at the same time, um, they claim that they are not part of the news sector, right? They say, no, we're just a connector. But um, what does that mean for the responsibilities that were traditionally uh, uh, taken up by the news sector themselves, right? What, 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 what happens with fair and accountable news coverage, for, 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 uh, for example?